Hey there, it's CJ Willie and I'm cracking a pack. Today is pack number eight in my Magic the Gathering Corset 2021 bundle. The focus of the video is what is your pick? As I crack the pack, I will discuss which card would be my pack one pick one. My viewpoint will be from a very casual Magic the Gathering player perspective. It will be, you know, more of a kitchen table draft, having fun with friends, opinion. So check out my preview video on my Core Set 2021 bundle. I have added the link to the preview video in the description below. Let's check to make sure we don't have a foil. Looks like we don't, but we might have something good. Oh yeah. So, land rare, three uncommons. Oh, whoops. Rare, land. I don't know, I may have messed that up. These uh, made in Japan English packs are hard to figure out. First card out of the pack is Spell Gorger. Weird, three mana, two and a red. Weird, at two, two, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Spell Gorger Weird. Playing a blue-red spells deck that Spell Gorger Weird can get out of control. There are going to be plenty of instants and sorceries and other non-creature spells cast that it's going to get big. Next up is Caged Zombie, three mana, two and a red. Zombie at two, three. You can pay one and a black. Tap it, each opponent loses two life. Activate this ability only if a creature died this turn. I think this card does enough work. Creatures are going to die in limited, and if you've kept mana in reserve, you're going to be able to, to activate it and slowly eke life away from your opponent. Next up is Sky Scanner, three generic mana, artifact creature Thopter. It's a 1 1. It's a flyer. When Sky Scanner enters the battlefield, draw a card. I don't think this is as good in the current limited format as it has been in a previous limited format. You do get a 1 1 flyer and you do draw a card, so it can trigger some of those extra draw abilities. I think it's a little too slow, and I've yet to find the right deck to put it into. Next up is Rousing Reed, three mana, two and a blue. It's an enchantment or enchant creature. When Rousing Reed enters the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard a card. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. In my opinion, the best blue common of the set. Rousing Reed comes in, enchants a creature, gives it flying, gives it plus one, plus one, but it gives it the ability to draw two cards, pitch a land, you set up your future hand, and you've got a flyer that if your opponent can't deal with, you could close out the game. Next up is Duress, single black mana, sorcery, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. It's something that I definitely don't play early on in the game, that I hold on to, and I use later in the game to grab that important card out of their hand. Next up is Life Goes On, single green mana, instant, you gain four life. If a creature died this turn, you gain eight life instead. Even with a morbid-like ability, this card still is unplayable and limited. I don't even actively look at drafting the card nor playing it. Next up is Satessan Training. Two mana, one and a green. Enchant Aura. Enchant creature you control. When Satessan Training enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus zero, and it has trample. I really like to pair it with the big beefies you're gonna play in green. There are a couple of green payoffs that if you draw the second card in the turn, you get an added advantage. Giving your creature trample is awesome because in green, with a beefy creature, you're going to get extra damage going through to your opponent and taking out any of their blockers. Next up is Village Rites, single black mana instant as an additional cost to cast the spell. Sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. This card is a much better version of Altar's Reap it costs one mana less. Being able to sacrifice a creature and draw two cards is great. It works out very well in the Black Red Sacrifice deck that has plenty of payoffs. Next up is King Glide Master, two mana, one and a blue, Human Soldier at two one. For two mana, getting a two one is okay, but having this ability to give other creatures flying is a great ability and limited. Next up is Staunch Shieldmate, a single white mana. It's a Dwarf Soldier at 1-3, nothing else. I'm not very high on this card. It doesn't seem to fit into a lot of the decks that you want to play in white. It doesn't seem to be very aggressive. Maybe in a little bit more of a controlling white-blue or white-black build. Our first uncommon is Sanctum of Calm Waters, 4 mana, 3 and a blue. 
It's a legendary enchantment shrine. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, you may draw X cards, where X is the number of shrines you control. If you do, discard a card. If you can find another sanctum to pair it with, preferably the black or the green sanctums, being able to look at two cards each of your pre-combat main phases, pairing it with Teferi's tutelage is a great combo and an easy win con in limited. Next up is Basri Solidarity. Two mana, one and a white sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. This is an uncommon that makes a lot of sense in the white green plus one, plus one counters deck. Pair it with a Conclave Mentor and your creatures are going to get really big, really fast. Paired with a Pride Malkin, this card will go nuts because each of your creatures has Trample. Our final uncommon is Bolt Hound. Three mana, two and a red, elemental dog at two, two. It has haste whenever Bolt Hound attacks, other creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, until end of turn. A great aggressive creature to put into, let's say, the white red deck. You put down creatures quickly, you go wide very quickly. Bolt Hound comes into the game, gives all your creatures additional power. It makes it really hard for your opponent to deal with. Okay, well we get a really cool rare or mythic rare. We have, Chandra's Incinerator. So six mana, five and a red, elemental at six six. This spell costs X generic less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponents this turn. Has trample. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. You can draft shock or a lot of other burn spells that deal direct damage to your opponent. Chandra's Incinerator is gonna do some work. If you set up the deck correctly, it will come in earlier than turn six, and a six-six trample is very hard to deal with. Okay, and then we have a mountain and a bird token. All right, my favorite card out of the pack, or best card out of the pack, is gonna be between Sanctum of Calm Waters or Chandra's Incinerator. In this instance, I would actually go with a rare. I think Chandra's Incinerator is a bomb that you can play unlimited. I think it's got a lot of cool abilities that once you pick it and you go into that red lane, you should be able to set it up to where you're able to play it earlier in the game and then utilize its ability to take down your opponent and their creatures. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Take some time to tell me in the comment section what was your favorite card or best card out of the pack. Until next time when I'm back to crack pack number nine in my Magic the Gathering Corset 2021 bundle in What is Your Pick?